Shalom and welcome back to Talking Torah. I'm Rabbi Ravid Tillis and I am very, very pleased to welcome to Talking Torah, which, by the way, is going to be the season finale. Yes, what an honor it is. Emmy Award. Yeah, <laughs> what an honor it is to have uh, on the show this, uh, this week Rena Cohen Cozen, the first vice president of the congregation. But to me, much more than that, uh, Rena was one of the co-chairs of the search committee that ended up hiring me, um, and so I'm forever indebted to Rena for all the work that you've done, bringing me here, welcoming me into the community. So it's my pleasure, really, to be sharing this last episode of the season with you. Um, and Rena, though, her next venture, now that I've been hired, her next venture is the whole Megillah, looking forward to next perm already. So I wanted you to have a chance to talk about that. Thank you, Rabbi Tillerson. It's my pleasure to be here with you. I can't believe that we're coming on a year. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, um, it's pretty great. So thank you for all that you've done this year. Um, the whole Megillah is a new project that we're doing. It's part fundraiser, part writing a new Megillah for the congregation that's going to have a lot of fun activities. Um, on Friday, July 11th, we're having a Shabbat dinner here. Um, it's Persian style, and there'll be some songs and some fun for everyone. And the idea of the whole Megillah is that we are going to, as a congregation, going to write a new Megillah with a sofer who will help us write the letters. And there's all levels of giving opportunities, starting with writing one letter with your family um, for a donation of $36, which is double high. And then, of course, there are other giving opportunities as well. Um, and you'll be seeing more information about this coming up and more about our um, other events. But starting in December, we will we'll be writing this with the sofa, and it should be a very fun time for everyone. And we hope everyone's going to participate. And our tagline is the whole Megillah, the Mordechai, the merrier. So we hope that we'll have a lot of people participating with us. Yes. With a tagline like that, how could they not participate? Okay. To thank my nephew for helping me with that. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit of Torah, okay? So this week's parsha is Chukat, and there's really it's a short parsha. It's a very very short parsha. It's usually doubled up with Balak, but this year it's not it's not doubled up. But it's so short, but it has a lot going on. It begins with the story or the mitzvah of the red heifer, of taking a red heifer, which is a very rare kind of cow, because all of the hairs are red, uh, sacrificing that red heifer, and then burning the flesh, which as part of the sacrifice, scattering the ashes into water, and then making that water what we call mayim chayim, which is a purifying water. So if you've done any sins, you uh, immerse yourself in this mayim chayim, this water with red heifer ashes in it, and then, uh, then you're purified, okay? Now, right after that, right after the story of the red heifer and the Mayim Chaim, we have another story about water, where Moses famously, uh, the people, once Miriam dies, and the people get worried that they're not going to have any more water, because Miriam had led them all to the wells, they get worried that they're not going to have any water, so they cry out and they rally against Moses. And Moses strikes a, the rock, uh, God tells Moses, speak to the rock, it will give you water, but instead Moses strikes the rock, and, and it is that action of not listening to God that where, Mo where Moses is actually punished and in a way that he won't be able to reach the promised land at the, end of the, at the end of the Torah. So we have these two stories of water, one right after the other, um, and I think it's just very interesting because we have a whole row of stories about people rallying against Moses and Aaron with Korah and actually Miriam uh, herself had rallied against Moses at, at, a, at a point. All the spies came back and rallied against Moses. It, we keep seeing that over and over again, but they insert this story about the Mayim Chaim, about the red heifer. And So I was wondering what your thoughts are about water really as, as an important life source, uh, knowing also that we say that the Torah is Eitz Chaim, a tree of life, but also that Torah is like water. 
So I was wondering your thoughts. Well, there's a couple of different thoughts, but one of the thoughts is that, you know, when you look at building any kind of new land or new civilization, the most important thing that you need is water. Right. And um, so uh, without water, there's there really can't be any life. And so without, for us as Jews, without Torah, mm -hmm. there's no guidance of, right. of, our, of, of how to live our lives because the Torah really guides us on so many different ways and on how to live our lives and also gives us the opportunity for different interpretations so we can make the Torah work best for us as well based right. on those interpretations. Right, yeah, it, it's, um, the Torah is multifaceted and within the Torah you have all this talk about water which is multifaceted also right. because water for one can be the thing that saves you, right? And water for another can be the thing that punishes you. Which we, we found out during Sandy that water was right. suddenly not something that was friendly. Right, that's when a We saw the water rushing up our streets and around our house. We found out that water was not necessarily um, uh, something that was, was, um, uh, get a, was, was safe for us. Right, that, that's a great point. That, that's a wonderful point that I hadn't even thought about. But we know that this notion of water Water is the source of life, and it is the foundation that civilization is built on, as is Torah. But it's more, but it's more complicated than it's just all good. And there are things about the Torah that are complicated, you know. And um, and so when we think about Torah being ma the Mayim, or kind of the Mayim Chayim, the source of our life, um, then we we should understand that the Torah is a complicated uh, text that we need to look at and we need to grapple with because it's the source of life. We can't just write it off and say it's insignificant. It's tremendously significant, even the parts of it that challenge us. Right. That, wow. And, that, and, and yeah, most, that's the great. thing that always challenges me is that Moses never got to the Promised Land. Right, I mean, that's, even in itself. That is such a challenge after he did so many of the things that God instructed him to do. And even when he didn't, like instead of talking to the rock and hitting the rock, it, it, it to me wasn't that much of a. Um, the of a punishment mistake. didn't really right. fit the didn't crime. Fit yeah. For him to yeah. never get to the promised land is always something that I have grappled with. Right. So there you go. The Torah has a lot to grapple with. It's not only good, but it, it but it is Mayim. It, it is a, the life source for the Jewish people. Wonderful. That, that that's great stuff. Thank you so much for bringing that and sharing your thoughts and talking to us about the whole Megillah. I want to wish everybody not only a Shabbat Shalom like I always do, but have a wonderful summer. We're going to take a little bit of a hiatus uh, from this program for a few weeks. And when we come back, I think that probably the first person who's going to be standing next to me might look a little bit familiar to you. If you think back to the, the first few talking towers that we ever did. Uh, so we'll really look forward to welcoming him back. Um, and, and thank you again to Rena. And thank you all for watching. And uh, see you next year. Shabbat Shalom and Lahitra. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, Rabbi Tillis.